afternoon and it's a pleasure to be able to share very briefly uh, this example of a collaborative experience. Um, joining me today, um, uh, I have my colleague Charlie Abela from, uh, so we are merging ICT and pharmacy. And we would like to present uh, some reflections about um, why we believe that um, uh, uh, from a pharmacist perspective, why we believe that uh, artificial intelligence in pharmaceutical and healthcare settings is presenting a, an outcome to our patients to describe some applications uh, which are currently leading to an optimization of the pharmaceutical processes. And then finally, um, on to uh, Charlie, who will actually present some examples from our um, research portfolio that are uh, linking um, this aspect with AI and uh, patient outcomes with a clinical intervention. So um, from the pharma, um, we have been hearing over the past two days a lot of focus on uh, the importance of moving towards incorporating artificial intelligence within the pharma process. As a uh, department of pharmacy at the University of Malta, we do believe that this does not stop anywhere in the drug cycle. Um, it, it links uh, pharmaceutics, the, the technology process, the pharmacology process, as well as the patient outcomes process. And this is drawn in through our different uh, uh, pharmacist and pharmaceutical technology curriculum program that we are currently running. What we know is that within this area, with artificial intelligence, we can move towards more accurately predicting an effect, highlighting the risk of therapy, and what we're also very much uh, advocating for in the healthcare setting is to personalize that therapy and the care to the needs of the specific patient. And we do see that one of the examples is that we can do this by having an evidence-based information <laughs> system that can also embrace artificial intelligence, which is the example that we are going to share today. Um, what I wanted also to share is that uh, we are also very much driven as a pharmacist and coming from the caring profession that the patient is always at the center of whatever we are doing, whether we're developing a new device or a new medication. Um, and in fact, this is the diagram on the side is a description of having the patient always at whatever drug journey or device journey we're trying to um, believe. Um, what we are also seeing is that with the availability of drug digital tech platforms and um, more so artificial intelligence, um, the machine platform is highlighting our human interaction with our patients. So that is why we as a pharmacist need to believe, we believe that the move towards uh, digitalization and um, uh, artificial intelligence can make the healthcare and our pharmaceutical services more humane. Um, this is just a snapshot of what happens it, at the patient bedside um, with the pharmacist who needs to understand the patient context, um, provide information about drug interactions, side effects, and empower the patient and collaborate with other healthcare professionals and at the same time taking clinical decisions. Um, and these decisions are including which drug, which device, which risk to avoid for our patient, which side effect, um, and what is the topic of today, what drug interactions can happen. So having artificial intelligence that can support this clinical decision making is something that we are going to um, make a, a life changing event in the pharma aspect. So making AI for pharma useful needs to, of course, look at the validation and implementation of these technologies. And that is always has to be the driving force before um, any of the artificial intelligence applications that can be applied. And uh, now I'll pass on to my colleague who will drive you through from the artificial intelligence perspective on drug interaction. Good evening, good afternoon. Um, my voice isn't really that good today, but I, I hope that um, we'll manage to transmit the idea. 
So thank you, Lillian, first of all, um, uh, for uh, the introduction. So I'm Charlie Abella from the Department of Artificial Intelligence uh, within the University of AI. And over these past three years, we have started focusing on the area of drug-drug interactions. And I'm going to go to, to, to uh, take you through the various phases of this project. And now the, the third phase that I'm going to, to talk about later on, also involving the, the Department of Pharmacy and, and uh, professionals, healthcare professionals in the area. So drug-drug interactions, or DDIs, all right? Um, they occur when two or more drugs are uh, being administered simultaneously to patients. Um, possibly um, uh, interactions could be adverse. So um, uh, it has been found that uh, ADRs or um, uh, adverse drug reactions um, are in part uh, preventable, um, but uh, it is therefore furthermore crucial that, that uh, uh, healthcare professionals are, uh, have the uh, information, the updated information at, at their fingertips so that they can make uh, informed decisions when the need arises. Okay, so um, to motivate our work, um, uh, some figures um, in the EU alone, um, uh, more than 8.6 million people um, are admitted yearly to hospitals due to some adverse drug reaction. 50% um, of these hospital admissions um, were found to be preventable. And 70% of these patients are uh, those that uh, take five drugs or more. Furthermore, the risk of an ADR increases by 7 to 10% with each medication that is obviously added on top of um, the patient's um, medication list. Um, from research, it was also found that less than 50% of adverse drug reactions are usually detected during clinical trials. And we know that clini clinical trials tend to be laborious, they tend to obviously be expensive. So how did the MEDEX platform, which is the platform that we are working on, evolve over, over these, these past few years? So in the initial phase, uh, the focus was on extracting information from medical publications. So we consulted publications like PubMed, and then we applied different machine learning techniques to be able to extract several uh, bits of information. I mean, uh, machine learning techniques are not, not magic, all right? We can only um, extract information um, or some of the information that is available in similar documents. Um, in the second phase, um, we complemented our MEDEX platform with facts and explicit knowledge, and we again leveraged on <coughs> machine learning to provide even uh, more comprehensive information to, to the, to the um, professionals. In the third phase that is going to start just now, um, in these months, um, we, are in we intend to extend the Matrix platform with a layer of explainability so that we can allow the professionals to not just have information, but have information that, that also is explainable, that, that is more, more reliable. So I'm going to just elaborate a bit more on each and every one of these phases. So in the first phase, um, we created a corpus of medical publications, uh, predominantly from PubMed, and we applied several, several uh, techniques to be able to extract um, the drug names, um, whether it's a drug being mentioned uh, via brand name, via the technical name. So we developed a drug named entity recognizer. And furthermore, we developed also a drug-drug interaction identification uh, tool so that we could identify the various um, relations and possibly pick up the adverse reactions that are um, uh, shown uh, or discussed in, in, in the paper. Uh, this was uh, a paper that was, uh, this work was published in a, in, a, in a paper and it was quite well received and this was way back in 2020. <clears throat> so, in the next phase, 
what we did was we complemented the existing um, uh, features that we had uh, with, uh, with uh, knowledge that uh, came from trustworthy uh, sources, trustworthy drug-related sources. So we collected and aggregated information about different DDIs from these sources. We created a mapping because there were many sources and we wanted these sources, obviously, to um, be uh, merged successfully in what is referred to as a knowledge graph. So we built a knowledge graph. A uh, knowledge graph is a structure similar like Google's knowledge graph, but obviously this is specific for, for drugs now. And we have all this information about drugs, like drugs, genes, diseases, side effects. And what we did was we, we transformed then this knowledge into um, um, a vector representation, a structure that can, be, that can be used by machines, used by software that you have on, on, on a machine, right? Machine learning, machine learning software. And the idea was to be able to predict DDIs, to predict drug-drug interactions that were not found explicitly in already in, in the literature or in the data that we had available. Okay, we evaluated this using um, using DDIs that we knew about. All right, so that we could assess the success of our of our research. In our last effort, that as I said, will start has started. In the past weeks, we intend to provide um, uh, a platform, the platform itself, to the healthcare professionals. In fact, we are going to consult with the, with the healthcare professionals so that we encapsulate their needs in the platform. And furthermore, introduce this level of, of explainability so that uh, we could um, provide not just information, but uh, useful information uh, reliable information to these uh, to these professionals. So thank you for your attention. So if you want to contact us, there are our emails, and feel free to reach out. Thank you very much.